morning, everybody. My name's Angela, if you don't know me. Morning, everyone online. Um, yes, I'm just going to pray first before I do anything. So, Lord, we just come before you now. Lord, we just lift this morning up to you. Lord, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would just come and be with us right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, just be with each one of us, Lord. Fill us with your Spirit. Lord, lead us and guide us, Lord. And just give us your peace in the name of Jesus. I'm just going to read this scripture, which is Romans 8.1. So now there is no condemnation for those who be in Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Amen. So let's enjoy our worship this morning. He prays our treasures the fail
been so, so good to me. Well, I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. All the
Thank you, Jesus. Um, just as we were worshipping this morning, I had a phrase keep going through my head, and um, it's a phrase uh, which I might need to explain, um, and I should know where it comes from, but I don't. Um, and it's called uh, living above the snake line. And in the world, what that means is there are mountains, there are places where people live that are so elevated that snakes basically can't live up there. Um, and in the spiritual, what that means is there are places that we can live that are so near to Jesus that the enemy activity can't get anywhere near us. And I just really felt this morning that I wanted to speak to people um, who feel like life is a battle. Um, and I'm not talking about the normal kind of ups and downs and highs and lows of, of life that we all have and that Jesus walks us through. But I'm talking about people who just feel it's one thing after another after another. And you just cannot get your head above um, anything. And, and I just really want to um, say to you this morning that the Lord knows. Um, the Lord sees you and is with you in it. Um, and I just want to release hope and encouragement to anyone who is just battling and battling and battling. Uh, where it's just not one thing, it's another. Um, and I just want to say that there is a place that you can go where the enemy can't get near you and that place is in the arms of Jesus and that sounds like a very um, kind of super spiritual thing to say and people are going to be like well how do you do that I don't even know how you do that um, but I just want to encourage you that you do know how to do that and you have your way and for you it might be worship it might be scripture it might be silence and solitude and just getting away from the melee and just sitting very quietly just you and the Lord but you have ways to do that. It might be walking in nature, um, if you can have five minutes to do that. Um, but I would just encourage you to, um, sorry, and it might also be getting with other people. Uh, sorry, the Lord's also just reminding me that it, it just might be getting with other people and having people pray for you and love you. Um, but whatever way it is for you, I just want to encourage you to get with the Lord um, and um, let him love you out of that place where it's just a battle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, and I was thinking as well that um, when we were singing the song earlier about, um, you know, there is nothing better than you, Lord, that he was kind of saying, well, you know, Jesus lives in every one of you. There's nothing better than you lot. You lot are amazing. And each one of you is, there's nothing better. There's nothing better on earth than each one of you. Um, and the Lord loves you so much. And you know, we condemn ourselves because sometimes we don't forgive ourselves. And John is going to talk about this later. And I think that's got something to do with what Lindsay was saying as well, that, you know, if we live in a place of condemnation, we're not where we should be, kind of in the arms of Jesus. Um, although he knows that and he understands that. And of course we are, but in our own minds, we're not. Um, and so we need to protect ourselves. And Emily's got a word about that. Um, there's a lo lovely lady over there called Jessie I would recommend you talking to her because she's amazing she's really wise and got lots of stuff in her head from God and she recommended I listen to this um, talk by Andrew Womack and there was a particular bit that um, I was reminded of this morning and it made me laugh out loud because he said that there are so many Christians in the world that are wearing their helmet of salvation but otherwise they're running around naked they're just streaking and so and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, it was hilarious. But we are, some of us, we're not, we're sometimes, we're not walking in our armor. Like get, God's given us in his word, the armor of God. Like we don't just have to know that we're saved and have a helmet on. We also have to walk with our righteousness. We are, we are perfect because of Jesus. Like let's not put down what Jesus did. We're perfect. We can stand with our shoulders back because we've got righteousness on us. And we can walk in peace even when there's like we're walking through a battle. Because that, it says in the Bible that we've got an armor because we are in a battle, a spiritual battle. So we have to stand in our peace. We have to walk in our peace. 
And we have to have the belt of truth around us and the sword of the, the spirit and, the, the, and our faith of a, of a shield. And I would recommend reading the, the armor of God in Ephesians 6. Read it, read it. And just, um, just Jesse's been really like inspiring me to read more and more of the word. And this week I've had a lot of battle, and, but I've just been going no. And I've just been proclaiming aloud because our words are really powerful. You're listening, but so are other spiritual things. You're, you're, um, I've been proclaiming verses like, no, I'm a child of God. Like, God works through all things for the good of those who love him, i.e. me. <laughs> he works my good. He gives me the desires of my heart. I do not have to worry. It says, do not worry. It just say, doesn't say, oh, maybe you shouldn't worry about things. It says, do not worry. It says, cast all your anxieties onto the Lord, for he will sustain you. And just like, oh, this, the word is like our our sword why are we trying to walk into a battle without a sword people this is a love letter and it's a sword and so let's not streak anymore and just have our helmet on because the rest of us is naked and 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 vulnerable so get your jolly sword get your armor on Woo! thank you emily i hope i've got my armor on standing up here <clears throat> yeah thank you lord yeah, Lord, we just want to thank you for those words, Lord. And we just want to pray, Lord, that Lindsay's word and Emily's word would go straight into our hearts, Lord. And we wouldn't forget them, Lord, that they would just go in and minister to us, Lord, and help us over the next week or so. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship band. You may go and sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to um, do a few prayers. Um, we're just going to pray for our lovely counselling centre. Joe's not here today, but Joe runs our um, counselling centre. Um, Sue also does some counselling there, and so does lovely Sandra, wherever she is. Um, so I just want to lift them up. Um, so yes, Lord, we just lift up um, our lovely counselling centre, Lord. We just thank you for the faithfulness of the counsellors there. Lord, and we just ask that you would continue to bless them, Lord, and that people in the community would get the help they need from that lovely service, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Um, and we always pray for a local church. So this week um, we're praying for St. Mary's, which is um, the pastor there is Trevor. So, Lord, we just um, lift up St. Mary's Church to you, Lord, and we just ask that you bless them, Lord, that you just be with them, Lord, that you fill them with your spirit. Lord, that you just help them in everything they do in the community, Lord. Um, and you just, um, yeah, anoint them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So I have a couple of notices. Um, we've got a spiritual gifts evening. And this is about discovering your spiritual gifting. So if you don't know what your spiritual gifts are, come along on the 18th of May at 745 um, and you can get some prayer about what your gifting might be and how God might want to use you. Um, in the, I don't like use you, partner with you. <laughs> um, just to say that if you want to give an offering, um, there are dishes over by the door, um, or you can give online if you go to our website. Okay, can I have John up, please? Well, he's preach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Lord, we just lift John up to you right now. Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'd be with John. Lord, that you would just speak through him. Lord, that we would hear every word, Lord, that, that you have to say through him, Lord, and that it would just go straight into our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Angela. Am I on? Can you hear me? Brilliant. Thank you very much. Wow. We are two weeks in, aren't we? Two weeks since, since David left. And um, it's been good this morning, hasn't it? Um, great worship, great words. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, I was talking to Barry. You know Barry, the David's friend. Um, little guy, you know. Um, 
at the leaving do two weeks ago and he was just encouraging me as he always does he's always encouraging isn't he and saying I guess we all know this anyway but just saying how different the church is than it was when David arrived and those of you who were there then will know that really well won't you um, let's just thank God for that shall we thank God for all that he did through David and Sue and how different he's made us to be now than we were 12 years ago <coughs> and then um, Barry was saying uh, again you know being encouraging but I want you to hear this encouragement he just felt that God had so much more still for us and some he said he thought were he could see green shoots coming up already and I think there are some green shoots around I think the leadership with we're seeing a few green shoots at the moment as Sue Watson started a little autism support group linked into Noah's Ark started slowly but it's it's a green shoot I think Sue isn't it um, let's pray that God just grows that shoot at his pace and in his way and blesses Sue and blesses those who those who come and God is bringing new people to us such a trickle of new people and I just want to say a welcome to those of you who are new today it's really good to have you we think you're a green shoot <laughs> <coughs> so welcome so um, I think as a leadership we've always thought actually that this transition period however long or however short it is is going to be a time of growth we're going to see green shoots growing so we're excited about that occasionally slightly daunted but excited um, and I hope you are too um, we're not trying to force any growth we're just looking forward to the growth that we think God is going to bring to us so um, in the context of that growth I think it's really important that I start to talk about things like um, mesh size and appropriate materials and the ratio between the net size of the individual can we can we have the first slide please is it up wonderful <coughs> you probably recognize that from last week um, it was Heather's picture of the net yeah and the net is quite a significant thing for us as a church we feel as a leadership it represents our loving connectedness as a church it represents the strength of our relationships it represents our capacity to serve and attract and embrace the people that God sends to us it represents our love so this series is really all about strengthening that net and if we can have the next slide I think last week Heather kicked it off brilliantly with um, being devoted to each other and this week this week it's my turn uh, and I get to talk about forgiving each other so that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> and on the next slide I've got a little bit of a menu there um, a little bit of a structure so I'm going to talk about f forgiving and being forgiven first of all um, then why should we forgive <coughs> say a little bit about what forgiveness isn't um, a little bit about difficulties in forgiving because I don't think it's always straightforward a um, little bit about what I've called forgiveness and brave communication because I think I think you've got to be brave sometimes to forgive and yeah we'll talk about that and at the end we'll finish off with communion so if anyone doesn't have a communion thingy with them um, we'll make space for you to get one and we'll finish up with communion so I've kind of got a verse or maybe five verses which I think um, kick us off quite well so let's if we could have the next slide therefore as God's chosen people talking about you holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone 
Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love that binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ, I don't know why, I just want to bless you with that. The peace of Christ, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful. <clears throat> it's a lovely passage, isn't it? It's a lovely passage. Um, I'm just going to suggest that beneath it lies a slightly less lovely reality. <laughs> and that is that we're going to hurt each other and we're going to have grievances against each other once in a while. If we can have the next slide, if we haven't done already. Um, <clears throat> and therefore, if we're going to keep that net strong, we're going to need to forgive each other. And it's it's an odd thing, and I think often the Christian life is a bit of a tension, isn't there? There's a tension between loving each other, living open and vulnerable to each other, thinking the best of each other, but also realizing that we have the potential to hurt each other, and we're probably going to. That's part of the tension that we live in, isn't it? And um, I think we all have a bit of a different journey to kind of realizing that and beginning to live in that. Um, I don't know about you, but when I first became a Christian, um, you know, everything was perfect for about three days. <laughs> and suddenly someone did something that really hurt me. <laughs> Call yourself a Christian. You know, that's not what I signed up for. And the shock and the outrage and gosh, 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 gosh. Um, and over time, we realize that actually we do get hurt by the Christians. And part of our walk is to deal with that well and to keep loving each other and to keep that net strong. That's what I'm trying, that's what I want to talk about this morning. Um, let's start here. Um, good place to start, I think. Last week, if you remember, Heather said that we love because we've first been loved. Yeah? We love because Jesus loves us. And in the same way as that passage that I've just read said, we forgive because we have been forgiven. And, and the fact that we have been forgiven can fuel us to forgive, even when it seems that's a hard one to forgive. Well, actually, we've been forgiven. So, you know, that helps us to fuel, to fuel that. <coughs> and it's probably just a good time now. Um, I mean, you'll know that I'm on a journey with this. You know, I'm, I'm not speaking from on high here. I'm, I'm not. Um, there, is, there will be people in the room, and I'm probably included, that deep, deep down, we're not sure that we're yet forgiven for that thing. Or we know in our head we're forgiven for that thing. But actually, emotionally, we don't live completely in that sense of freedom and forgiveness. I just want to acknowledge that. And, you know, if, if that's you, and if that's me, we're forgiven. And we're on this journey of just realizing the wonder and the beauty of the fact that we are forgiven. And we're forgiven as a fact. We can't do anything about it. We didn't earn it. It was a gift to us from Jesus. It is a gift to us from Jesus, isn't, isn't it? <clears throat> but again, there's a kind of tension here, and, and, and I hope this kind of makes sense, <clears throat> that the Bible speaks quite often about there being a link between <clears throat> our experience, our feeling of being forgiven, our experience of being forgiven, and how good we are at forgiving others. So we receive forgiveness as a gift, but it's kind of linked to how good we are at forgiving other people in terms of our experience of it. Does that, does that make sense? You know, in <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I get a bit intense about some of this stuff. Um, if this does get too intense, by the way, I've scheduled a couple of joke interludes so we can <laughs> dial down the intensity. Um, and you may or may not think that's a good thing, depending on the jokes. But anyway, um, <clears throat> but in the Lord's Prayer, it says, doesn't it, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. There's a little bit of a synergy going on there. And if we could have the next slide, um, this, this is a helpful scripture. 
<clears throat> don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you'll be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Um, I always think it's a bit dodgy when people say, I, you know, that's my favourite Bible verse. But that's close to being my favourite Bible, <laughs> if I'm allowed to do that. Uh, the Bible's all good, but, but I just love this, love this passage. And I love this idea that, you know, the measure you use is what will be measured back to you. Um, and it's such generosity, a good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. And that as we forgive, so we position ourselves to receive forgiveness so well. <clears throat> so why should we? Why should we forgive? Firstly, Jesus commands us to. Secondly, as I've just said, I think our experience of forgiveness is significantly influenced by our capacity to forgive. The two go together. Um, it restores broken relationships. It, it, mends the net, it mends the net. Really interestingly, secular research, if you go on the internet or look at other places, secular research tells us what a good thing forgiveness is. Uh, had a look yesterday. Forgiveness apparently is associated with less stress, lower blood pressure, less hostility, that's perhaps not surprising, better anger management, lower heart rate, there's a whole list of them. More friendships, lower risk of substance abuse, lots of statistically significant links between good things and us forgiving. <clears throat> I came across this research, which um, I'll just read to you if that's okay. I don't know how authoritative, how authoritative it is, give or take one or two syllables, um, but it sounded good, so that's, let's read it. <coughs> Researchers at, Vid at Virginia Commonwealth University wrote, chronic unforgiveness causes stress. Every time people think of their transgressor, their body responds. Decreasing your unforgiveness cuts down your health risk. Now if you can f actually forgive, you can actually strengthen your immune system. It's interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> There's more. Dr. Bernie Siegel, writer, surgeon, and retired medical professor at Yale University stated, <coughs> excuse me, I have collected 57 extremely well-documented so-called cancer miracles. So he's coming at this from a sort of slightly skeptical, non-Christian position, I assume. <clears throat> So-called cancer miracles. At a particular moment in time, they decided that anger and depression were probably not the best way to go because they had such little time left. So they went from that, being, from that to being loving, caring, no longer angry and depressed and able to talk to the people they love via forgiveness. <clears throat> These 57 people had the same pattern. They gave up totally their anger, they gave up totally their depression, by specifically a decision to do so. And at that point, the tubers started to shrink. I find that so emotional, actually. At that point, the tumors started to shrink. Yeah, that's from a, I'm not quite sure why I find that so emotional, but that's where, f that's where healing lies. Forgiveness, healing, skeptical, non-Christian researcher at that point as far as I could tell, at that point, the tumours began to shrink. There's a link between our forgiveness and how our body receives healing. Um, now there's going to be the joke interlude, but it doesn't quite seem right, so I'll, I'll, I'll hold back on the joke interlude. Um, I'm just trying to ted, just trying to sense the right atmosphere, um, and. I, and I've seen the jokes, and I, and I don't think now's the right time. <laughs> Can the next slide, please? <laughs> What's 
But it's forgiveness not. It's not weakness. I don't think it's weakness. Uh, it can be, you know, forgiveness can be doormat, but it's not. True forgiveness is not, is, is not weakness. I think it actually takes strength and the strength that Jesus gives us to, to forgive. Uh, it's not saying that whatever happened didn't matter. Um, it's not saying that at all. And I think sometimes people hold back from forgiveness because they think, well, by forgiving, I'm kind of saying it didn't matter. I in fact, what you're saying is actually it did matter. It hurt me deeply. But because Jesus is my Lord, I forgive you. And, yeah. uh, and freedom in Christ, who part of why we've become a church which is in a different place than we were when David arrived was we did the Freedom in Christ course and that talks about forgiveness and it, it encourages people to say something like I forgive X for doing Y because it uh, sorry let, let me get this right I forgive X for doing Y which made me feel Z so you're kind of owning the pain of the forgiveness when you forgive and that's part of the package because that I'll say more about this later but I think as you forgive and you own the pain that actually helps release the pain as well so there's a sort of healing dynamic that's going on <coughs> uh, forgiveness isn't a weapon and um, I think once or twice I, I think I need to explain that but I think once or twice I've used it a little bit as a weapon in that I've kind of say to God right I've forgiven this person now go get them <laughs> Uh, okay, God, I've done my side of the bargain. Now you can really judge them. And that's not what it's about. Um, and, I mean, God does say, you know, vengeance is mine, I will repay. But what I found was a very good discipline when I'm trying to forgive somebody is that you follow that up by asking God to bless them. And, you know, not go get them, but Lord, bless that person. Bless their marriage. Bless their relationships bless their finances. I think that's the spirit to do it in. Yeah. So I'm, um, yeah. <laughs> that's the spirit to do it in. Um, it's not a guaranteed end to pain, I don't think. Um, I think forgiveness is a process often. And I, I think, you know, it, 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 yeah, I think the act of forgiveness is so important actually in releasing pain and it is part of the healing process. But it's not necessarily an end to that pain. And as the next one says, it's not always necessarily over in one go. Um, you know, I, th I think you may come back to it. And actually, I'm still hurting. I'm still going to forgive. Um, or maybe the, maybe the situation is still going on. I'm still forgiving in that situation. So it's not over in one go, necessarily. <coughs> uh, difficulties in forgiving. Um, yeah, I'm still holding back on the jokes, if that's all right. <laughs> um, difficulties in forgiving. Pain, you know, sometimes we'd rather just pretend it didn't happen and, uh, and not go there. Um, it's much better to go there, but, um, you know, we can... For me, there's times when I can go there and times when I can't, you know. So take the t do it when it's right, but don't not do it. Um, Can you forgive someone who's died? Yes, totally, absolutely. Um, I was, I, I did last week actually, I was um, reflecting about my relationship with my dad. I, I, I talked a bit about my relationship with my dad and it, as many of us have relationships with dad, not that great perhaps in some ways. And I was reflecting, my dad grew up in an alcoholic household and his dad in particular had a real problem with alcohol. And obviously, you know, I think dad did amazingly to be the person he was in the face of the upbringing that he had. Uh, but it shaped him you know, enormously. And he didn't talk much about it, but a little bit. And I was just reflecting, and I just had a little bit of a prompting from God, forgive me, granddad. So I did, uh, my granddad, I hardly knew him, but he, and he died a long time ago. And as I, forg as I forgave my dad's dad, Something shifted in my heart. I felt it. I felt it. So you can, you can get, you, you can, you, no problem forgiving someone who's died. And to be honest, forgiveness is probably more for our benefit than it is for the other person's benefit. It's, it's both probably. 
but it's particularly for our benefit. Thank you.